Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Certainly giving God praise for another day that we have not seen before. Certainly give God praise for his spirit, his goodness for this holy week. Certainly give God praise for each and every one of you uh, that join, that like, that share. I certainly give God praise uh, for this is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad. I'm so thankful for a wonderful, wonderful Savior. Uh, there's still none like him. There's still, there's still none beside him. He is the only wise and the only true God. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's still yet good, still yet praising. Uh, God bless you. Uh, Sister Sanders, God bless you. God bless you. So good to see uh, your emoji face. <laughs> Certainly give God praise for you as well. Uh, I thank God for each and every one. Uh, I do not plan on uh, being in your way very long. Uh, I will get in and out of the way. I promise I will share with you uh, what the Lord gave me uh, and we will move forward. So uh, for those that, that like to have the, the, the scripture reference, I certainly like to. It keeps you, keeps you grounded and on task. Uh, we'll look at Exodus 12, um, uh, verse number 13, uh, and also Exodus chapter 12, verse number 23. Uh, so Exodus chapter number 12, verse 13, and Exodus chapter 12, verses 23. And uh, we'll read it from the New International Version, if that is all right. The New International Version uh, it reads like this, Exodus 12, chapter number 13, I'm sorry, Exodus chapter number 12, verse number 13. The Bible said, the blood will be assigned for you on the houses where ye, you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. And then verse number 23 of that same chapter, Exodus chapter number 12, the word of the Lord reads, when the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frame and will pass over that doorway. And he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Uh, when I see God did for us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, that is what this season and that is what this celebration uh, uh, that we that we indulge in year after year because there was no greater love than this, than a man would lay down his life for his friends. We give God praise for Jesus coming in the flesh, for Jesus being the very embodiment of God himself to come down and see about his people. I must say, I must say, as we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, it is also important uh, that we remember uh, out of all the miracles that Jesus did while he was here, out of all the miracles and all the great things that he did while he was yet here, the greatest miracle, the greatest miracle was the forgiveness of sins. Why is that the greatest miracle? That is the greatest miracle because everybody born was born in sin. There was no way you could escape it. There was no way you could get around it. We were all born in sin, but there is a God that even when we were yet in our sin still loved us. There was a God that were, while we were lost and could not find our way. There was a God that had already made a way. That is one thing I will always appreciate about God is that he always makes a way. He's always making a way and opening doors for his people. He's always doing great things. Uh, this is why we say that God is great and greatly and greatly to be praised. But one of the things that the Lord pointed out to me as I began to study is in Mark uh, chapter number 2 uh, verses 4 through 10. Mark chapter number 2 verses 4 through 10. Uh, I will read this very quickly uh, and you remember the story. And when they uh, could not come nigh unto him for the press, 
They uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let it down. They let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, the Bible said, he said unto the sick of the palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Uh, may I stop here uh, and, and submit to somebody that, that need it. Uh, I'm so glad that there are things that I want, but he knows what it is that I need. Uh, sometimes we get it, we get it confused when God doesn't, doesn't do something or doesn't do something in our timetable uh, 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 that we miss something from God. But brothers and sisters, what I love about him is that he always gives you what it is that you need. He always gives you the need. So notice here, while he can see that the man is in a paralyzed state. The man cannot move. The first thing that he does is say, son, thy sins are forgiven. So in other words, while the people may thought that the need was more that he received his healing, the need was that he needed forgiveness of sins. Uh, sometimes what it is that we want will confuse us from what it is that we need. This is why when people say, I want money, I want more money. Yes, you can you can have that thought that you want more money, but your money is not what can save you. I'm so glad that he looked beyond what the wants are sometimes and gives us what it is that I need. If, if a man should gain the whole world, what does it profit if he loses his soul? I'm so glad that God gives us what it is that we need. And you know the story the Bible says, but there were certain scribes sitting there, the people that understood the law and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? The Bible said, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to arise and take up thy bed and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. It is so powerful to me to see how it was that Jesus understood that the first thing that any person needs is forgiveness of sins. If you don't come out of your sins, you can have everything you want in this world. You can be the nicest person in this world, but you will still lose your soul if you don't have Jesus. What I need is more of Jesus. I can want stuff. I can want better stuff, but what is it that you need? I need I need, I need more. I need more of Jesus because what I found is that more of Jesus is what satisfies me. Have you ever, have you ever noticed, brothers and sisters, that you're never quite satisfied in your flesh? Have you noticed that your flesh always wants more of whatever it is that makes it happy? The only thing, Lord, I thank you that I have found that satisfies me is more of Jesus. I need more more of the master. I, I, I need more. I need more uh, of his presence. I need more. I need more of his glory. I, I, I need more. I need more of him to be dwelling on the inside of me. Have you ever thought to yourself, this is why David said my cup runs over. I don't want enough just to stop at the top of my head. I want it to run over. That's how much of Jesus that it is that I need. This is why, this is why brothers and sisters, the Exodus story is so powerful because it displays physical bondage, but also shows us a spiritual connotation. In other words, it was the blood that prevented the firstborn of the children of Israel from being destroyed with the Egyptians. It was, it was the blood that, 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 that caused them to be able to come out of bondage. It, it was the blood. It was the blood. And may I submit to you that it is still the blood uh, that prevented you and I from being destroyed. It's, it, it's still the blood that brings us out of the bondage of sin. It's still the blood. It's still the blood. I'm glad that we serve a consistent God. He didn't give you all 
kind of different ways. He said, there is one blood. There is one blood that is that is perfect. It is the perfect sacrifice without spot or wrinkle or anything that would that would taint this blood, this blood, this blood, this blood that was shed on Calvary. There, 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 there's something about the blood. Can I can I just stop here for a minute? I feel a pull on me to talk about the blood for a minute. It was the blood that before I even knew that there was blood for me, it was already covering me. There, there haven't you ever noticed and haven't you ever thought about how did I make it to where I could be saved? It was because of the blood, the blood that was already working on me before, before I got to Jesus, the blood that was already working on me. How can you say, Pastor Taylor, that the blood was already working on you because the Bible said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. It was because he was lifted up. It was because the blood was shed that caused, that caused God to move, to move on his people. This is why it should be no surprise that, that Jesus was able to heal the paralyzed man. It was no surprise that he could forgive his sins because on the inside of Jesus was blood that was already charged with the power of God. I, I, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that the blood that came streaming down was already charged and infused with the power of God. This is why after all all of these years, the blood still washes and the blood still cleanses. After all these years, the blood has never lost, has never lost its powers. It's something about that blood that flowed in Emmanuel's veins. There's something, there's something about the blood. I wish I could explain it to you, but there's something unexplainable about the blood, the blood of Jesus, the Bible. The Bible lets us know in Hebrews chapter number 10, brothers and sisters, verse number five through seven, it says, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin. Thou hast had no pleasure. In other words, the blood of bull and the blood of goats and, and, and the blood of, of the lambs were not enough. It was, it was not enough to make the atonement anymore for sin because sin began to continue to grow and he needed a sacrifice. And the Bible said, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O God. Aren't you glad that he came in the volume of the book? Every line and every precept was telling us about Jesus coming to shed his blood. But there was a a sacrifice that was necessary. We are here, brothers and sisters, because of the blood. The Bible, the Bible lets us know in Hebrews chapter number nine, verse number 22, and almost all things are by law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. The Bible, the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. So what does remission mean? Remission means release from bondage or imprisonment, forgiveness or price worthy enough to bring you out. This is why in Revelation, you remember the Bible says when they were trying to figure out who could open the book with the seven seals and loose them and read the contents. And the Bible said they looked around heaven and nobody was found worthy to open the book. But the Bible says that there was a worthy lamb. Worthy is the lamb. There was a worthy lamb that was able to open the book with the seals. The reason why the lamb was worthy because it was the perfect sacrifice. Sacrifice In the Old Testament, it was types and shadows to reveal to us what was happening in the New Testament. The Bible says he is not entering into a place made with hands, but he went beyond the veil. And that is his body to bring out that perfect sacrifice, that blood, that blood. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number nine. 
verses number 12 through 14 and I'm just about done the Bible says neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifier to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot, thank you Lord, to God, to purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. May I stop here for just a minute to remind somebody that after you have encountered the blood, we are supposed to serve God. It should drive you to want to serve God. Don't you remember what the Bible Bible said that the message was in Moses' mouth to the Pharaoh. The Bible says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Exodus 7 and 16, the Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me unto thee saying, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness. I'm so glad that when you encounter the blood, when you encounter the Savior, it can make me worship is your reasonable service. We should be serving after all that God has done for us. We, we should be serving. I'm so glad for the mercy of God because while the Bible says, and I understand brothers and sisters, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yes, yes, it was love, but it was also his great mercy, his great mercy. You remember, if I can just detour for just a second, you remember it was in 2 Samuel chapter number 7. Here is where you have Nathan talking uh, to David. David wanted to build him a house, and, and God says to David, he talking about Solomon in verse number 13 shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul. This is the thing I wanted to point out brothers and sisters. Aren't you glad that he won't let mercy depart from you? Surely, thank you Lord, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It is the mercy of God that has allowed us to be where we are. It is, it is the mercy of God that allowed you to make mistakes even after you were saved and allowed you to come back into right standing. It was the mercy of God that allowed us when we were tripped up and, and we spoke out of line and when we made uh, uh, the mistake that actually prevented Moses from seeing the promised land by speaking ill-advisedly with our lips. The Bible lets us know that it is the mercy of God, his abundant mercy. I love that scripture that says power belongs to God, but it also says also belonging to God is mercy. I'm so glad that mercy is a part of his character. Mercy is a part of who he is. It was, it was the ark of the covenant. And the Bible said that on top where the cherubim, where the angel's wings touched each other, the Bible said that it was called the mercy seat. Aren't you glad that our God is full of full of mercy. I have to move on. There is blood. There is blood. There is blood on the door of the Bible. Let's just know in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us. Lord, 
I thank you. When Jesus was going to the cross and when he was going through what he was going through, the Bible lets us know that God made him sin for us who knew no sin. He took his sinless son and made him sin for us that we might be the right, be made the righteousness of God in him. It was God that made him. The Bible said, the Bible said, for it pleased the Lord to bruise him. It, it, it was something about the fact that he made this body before the foundation of the world and he made it so that this body that he created could become sin. Look at how much God loves us. Look at how much mercy he showed to us to give us his only son. But this is what the Lord showed me and I'll get out of the way. The Bible said he was lifted up on a hill called Calvary. He was lifted up on a hill and other in other versions that the that the, the synoptic writers wrote uh, and John wrote he was on Golgotha and it means a skull. He was lifted up at a place that was that was shaped, if you will, like a skull. And I was trying to figure out, Lord, what are you trying to show me when he says there is blood at the door? This is this this is what's so powerful about this because we understand how the children of Israel would dip something in the hyssop and they would take that and they would put it, they would put it on the doorpost, the blood and the hyssop, they would put it on the doorpost, and it lets you know that when the destroyer saw the blood he had he had to pass over that was his commandment that whenever you see the blood you have to you have to pass over I'm so glad that even now in our homes when he sees the blood he has to pass over every time we look at the news and something tragic happens I think he saw the blood so so he had to pass over my house and had to pass over my family he had to he had to pass over my friends because because he saw he saw he saw the blood but this is what this is what the Lord showed me that he was hanging at the door of death. Death represented Golgotha. Death represented Calvary. In other words, when you were put on a cross in that place, you were at the door of death. You remember when they were getting ready to take the men down because they wanted them down before the Sabbath. The Bible said that there were the Roman soldiers that broke the legs of the two thieves on either side of Jesus so that they would collapse and, and fall under the pressure. Their lungs wouldn't be able to handle the pressure and they would die. Jesus here is hanging on a place of death. But here was the problem that he, that the enemy did not see when he was hanging at the door of death. While he was hanging, thank you Lord, at the door of death, there was blood that was flowing. So what the Lord said to me was, I put my blood at the door of death. This is why when he came out of the grave, he said, I have the keys of hell and death because I put my blood on the door. That means I have purchased those that I have purchased with my own blood. So when they come to this door, the Bible says, oh, death, where is thy? sting. Oh grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory. Thanks be to God that shed his blood at the door of death. Thanks be to God that put his blood on the doorpost of death so that when his people when his people get to the door, the destroyer cannot destroy you. The destroyer has to let you pass through in peace. The destroyer can't, can't frighten you when you get to the door because there is blood. And when he sees the blood, we've all been stained with the blood of the lamb. And when he sees the blood, thank you, Lord. 
what he has to pass over. He has to let you walk through freely. Remember, 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 brothers and sisters, it was because of the blood. It was because of what he sacrificed for us. He put his blood over that door that nobody could escape. He put his blood on that door that nobody could get away from. He put his blood on. He put his blood on that door. Brothers and sisters, we have challenges. Yes, I understand. Yes, we have fights with the enemy. Yes, I understand. Yes, we have trying days. Yes, I understand. But I'm so glad I'm so glad that the blood is still being seen now. I'm so glad that when the enemy who is taking so many people in this day and age and time still sees the blood. I'm so glad for the blood that was shed. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. There are many things, brothers and sisters, I get out of your way. There are many things that we should be thankful for. <laughs> but one thing, one thing outweighs all, and that is thank you for the blood. My mother used to tell me, mother used to tell me when you read the scripture, sometimes you miss how ugly of a place the altar was of the Old Testament where they had to constantly kill animals, what it must have smelled like, hmm. Hmm. what it must have smelled like, what it must have looked like. But there was a crimson stream that saved us, <laughs> that washed us clean, that washed us clean, not just on the outside, but purified us on the inside. I thank God for the blood. There is blood on the door. Brothers and sisters, I hope that something was said that would encourage you, that would strengthen you. This is Holy Week. This is Holy Week. Look for something that you've been asking for from the Lord. Look for something that, 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 that you've been asking for for some time and expect God, expect God to do something. I, I, I've been walking this week in expectation. I've been walking this week in expectation looking for what it is that I've been asking for, looking for God to save those that I've been praying about, looking for God to do great things. Because this, this is what his coming was all about, was to save us from our sins. God bless you. I love you. With the Lord of the Lord, if God says the same, I will see you next Tuesday for another moment in scripture. Enjoy your week. Enjoy Good Friday, rep uh, re reminiscing rather on what God has done for us and enjoy your resurrection Sunday. May God be praised. May God be glorified in your life this week. I love you with the love of the Lord.